So, friends, today we will be talking about stress, and in this topic, we have we will discuss about four themes. First, we will define stress, second, we will analyze the causes of stress, third, we will be deliberate on the consequences of stress and lastly, we will mention about the management of stress. And uh, as per the World Health Organization report, stress is the second important cause of death and it is also called the black death in 21st century. Today, stress is skyrocketing at an alarming rate and putting strain on individuals, families and communities. Stress is a state of mental tension or worry caused by problems in our life, work, environment etcetera. And it disturbs the dynamic equilibrium called homeostasis and it causes physical problems, emotional turmoil and adverse mental health. It leads to asthma, blood pressure, heart diseases, cancer and back problems. The internet and cyberspace continue, continues to move information and commerce that threatens the quality of interpersonal problems. The economic hardships, unemployment and breakdown of relationship in life causes emotional turmoil. And in this context, it needs to be stressed that the like economic problems, family problems, whatever we have mentioned that leads to stress are called the stressors. That means, in other words, the stimuli that cause stress are stressors, such as stressful life events like death of close relatives or family members, unexpected illness, illness of family members, breakup with friend, appearing for exam, change in eating habits, similarly noise, crowding, increasing temperature, daily commuting to office through busy road and irregular shift work causes stress and these are the stressors. For example, take the example of a loco pilot. He enters the loco cabin after signing in and in one day he starts his shift, first shift by 6 am. And as for the rule or the norm, the he will drive or he will go continue his work up to 8 hours and he will shift will end at 2 pm. And again after 8 hours, he will be called for duty. So, that means, if his shift ends at 2 pm, then again he will be called for duty at 10 pm in the night. So, if this sort of irregular shift occurs, then it leads to the distortion of biological clock and it also causes physical stress. And therefore, stress is such a thing 
that it causes our body to tear and wear. And let us now examine the relationship between stress and performance. Does stress increase or decrease performance? As per the graph, you can see we take the stress in the x axis and performance in y axis. And you will see a inverted u shaped curve. That means, when the stress is low, there is low motivation, inaction, lethargy leading to poor performance. And h the stress will go on increasing or there is a moderate level of stress it makes us alert, energized, challenged and that is the stage where the performance increases. And you will link the peak of the curve to the y axis and that is the stage of moderate aerosol associated with optimum performance. Say further the stress increases as it is in the x axis and therefore, there will be frustration, anxiety and the and finally, it may lead to a stage called emotional exertion, depersonalization, negative attitudes towards the organization and it and it will be reflected in poor performance which is called the stage of burnout. So, therefore, what we have learnt from this curve is that when stress is low or the aerosol is low performance is low, when stress is moderate the performance is high and when stress is high the performance is low. So, therefore, all stress will not lead to deterioration in performance. And the stress and for stress is essential is good for us and is a person's asset for achieving peak performance and managing minor crisis that is called the U stress. So, U stress is associated with high performance, whereas low and high stress are associated with deteriorated or low performance. So, stress is like a electric current and U stress is the level of stress that is good for us and is a person's asset for achieving peak performance and managing the crisis and therefore, stress is not only is bad and there is a good news that with moderate level of stress our performance will increase, whereas a high level of stress will deteriorate our performance. And, uh, and there is a another theory which is called the demand control model of stress and stress occurs in the individual when the environmental demands of the job are perceived are perceived to exceed the control and the ability of the individual needed to interact with these those demands. That means, we have certain abilities, certain skills and the say for example, our job is demanding more skill and more abilities to perform. At that time, when our ability will not cope up to meet the environmental demands, we will experience stress. And therefore, stress occurs when there is a difference between demand and control. Is my ability, is my skill, is my knowledge adequate enough? to meet the environmental demands. If it is yes, then there is no stress. If it is no, 
then there is stress. And stress has also the dimensions of intensity, duration, complexity and predictability. Say for example, take the example of pain that we get in the body. If the pain is of low intensity and it is for a shorter duration and it is of less complex and it is predictable that it occurs in certain part of the body, then such type of stress is less damaging to the individual. Contrarily, if the pain is very high, duration is long and it is occurs in different parts of the body, not localized to a particular part and it is unpredictable, then it leads to more stress. So, therefore, the experience of high stress and low stress depends on the intensity, duration, complexity and predictability of the stressful stimuli. And next the question comes, having said this, next the question comes, what causes stress? And the stimuli that cause stress as you discussed are called the stressors. There can be individual factors, there can be organizational factors and then can be environmental factors. Say for example, in the environmental factors, we have economic uncertainty. We do not have employment, political uncertainty as it is in Britain now or UK. Technological uncertainty means everyday technology is changing and we have to cope up with it. All these environmental factors will cause the stress. It was uh, stressed by the Hans Selye in 1946, who is also called the father of stress research. And different environmental and physical stimuli like extreme temperature causes stress. Organizational factors like tax demands, the role demands, interpersonal demands, organizational demands, organizational structure, leadership, schedule pressure and time pressure also causes stress few examples are here. Say for example, the organization where you work, the structure is very authoritative type and you do not have any freedom to make the decision in your job. It may lead to you, lead to your, lead to, frust lead to frustration. Similarly, the leadership is autocratic. He does not make a democratic decisions. So, you feel that I being a person in the organizations, my participation in decision making is not bothered about. Similarly, you have you have a job and you have to relate with other persons in the organizations, but you have a conflict with the other persons. And in the job, you cannot do the job if you do not take the help of the other person as, as in case of assembly line job. The output of one department becomes the input for another department and in such type of job, if the departments are not pulling well with one another, that means whatever is produced by the production unit because of interpersonal conflict with the quality control unit, the products are likely to be rejected. And this will also because of the inter problem with the personality class or the interpersonal problem of one department with the others. And here it will lead to the stress among the employees in that particular unit those who are producing, but 
despite of their good quality product, because of personal rivalry, the quality control department may not pass the products, and that the and the quality control department may reject the products, and that will create. Similarly, role demands. You are given a job, and at the same time, you have to do the job of a. You have to take care of your children. You have to take care of your family members. You have to entertain the guests, and you have to interact with the politicians in order to successfully execute your jobs. Even if you are an employee in the organizations, these roles are around you. If you do not, if you fail to successfully execute any of the roles, that will also lead to stress. Similarly, low role distance. If we you are a police officers working in the office, and under you constables are working, and you return from the office to the family, then the same role is carried out from the office to the family. You will experience. You will also treat your children and others like constables, which will be perceived. on favorably by the children and the housewife so therefore all these organizational factors also leads to stress and also you have a job the deadline and time target is decided but the job is so much that will be in the scheduled time it will not be completed so the time pressure will generate the stress time and schedule pressure Will generate the stress. Similarly, individual factors like family problems, economic problems, personality, they will also cause the stress. And here you can find some of the consequences of stress. There can be. physiological consequences psychological consequences and behavioral consequences and in the context of the organization you will be finding that if you are suffering from extreme stress or continuous exposure to stress leads to burnout and if you are experiencing the continuous stress or high stress it will lead to the heart disease it will lead to ulcers high blood pressures headache sleep disturbances increased illness and these are the physiological system will be disturbed the psychological consequences in the organizational context will be job dissatisfaction low commitment you will feel emotionally exhausted you will also feel depressed the and sometimes you will be happy sometimes you will be down and also mood disturbances you will experience anger you will show violence you will be aggressive or you can experience burnout and the behavioral consequences of stress will be lower job performance more accident faulty decisions higher absenteeism and workplace aggressions so because of the stress because of the stress you will not report to work and remain remain in uh, absent and because of the stress many executives do not concentrate on variety facets of the issue and makes faulty decisions because of the stress in reporting filing or in production certain units high errors will be there and more likely you will be committing accidents in the organization if you are suffering in stress because your mental physical and emotional system is disturbed 
and you cannot concentrate on the job and give your best. So, therefore, there are many behavioral markers or the consequences of stress. Having said this, these consequences you can find some vulnerability markers and the vulnerability markers will say you that you have in the it will also indicate that you are subjected to stress and experiencing stress and the outcome for it are is that frequently you are experiencing headache feeling being constantly under strain, being excessively tired too much of the time, sensation of pressure in the head, racing of heartbeat, feeling easily hot, something to worry about always dwelling on negative aspects of past and future, overreactions to life's small problems, expecting the worst to happen, wanting to make sure that everything is all right or you are a perfectionist, unable to take decisions or concentrate. taking everything personally that goes wrong and often experiencing panic reactions. And if such uh, are the stress reactions at the individual level, at the organizational level, if stress occurs, then what happens? Employees the the employees leave the organization and once the employee there will be poor financial conditions and out of extreme stress the motivation or the internal inspiration will decrease there will be negative attitudes towards the organization towards the higher ups in the systems and towards the policies of the organization. And if the stress is there, more likely you will not concentrate, problems in quality of the product will come. Stress in the organization will also lead, will happen when there is sudden technological disasters. A something bursts or like gas leak in Bhopal disasters. And there will be threats and as well as there will be on the job accidents and the change in the market forces. This will lead to the stress in the organization. Similarly, in the some of the things that happens to the individual personally that also leads to stress. These are called the life events, stressful life events such as death of a close relative, divorce, loss of job, sexual difficulties, imprisonment, change in family conditions, change in financial conditions, responsibility of handling a stressful situation, change of job change of habits like smoking and drinking, trouble with co-workers or boss, these are the change in life events that also that also causes that also are the consequences of stress. And like death of close relatives will cause stress, because of stress there will be sexual difficulties, there will be change in habits or trouble with co-workers and boss. So, you can think of the consequences of stress 
in three clear cut terms. One is the physiological symptoms which include headache, blood pressure, gastric, asthma, heart disease and cortisol secretions. Physiological markers of stress will be anxiety, depression, negative effect and emotions. Behavioral marker will be drinking, smoking, increased alcohol consumption. Relational consequential consequences will be relational conflicts, avoidance of others and so on. And also and uh, and stress will also in the organizational level will lead to absenteeism, turnover, low commitment, low engagement and stress, ex excessive stress also distorts the perception of managers. This adversely affects their capacity to take decisions. Having said this, there are certain abilities on the part of the individual or certain personal resources on the part of the individual which will help him to control the stress. The persons, those who think that they can fight against the situation and they make themselves responsible for the consequences what happens in a job or in life, they are the people those who are called internally controlled. These people are less susceptible to stress compared to the people those who feel that whatever happening in life is controlled by some external forces like fate, chance and God. Similarly, if you have the ability within yourself that I can manage the situation, I can survive in difficulties and that is called the stage of self-efficacy. Similarly, a faith, a positive thinking that I can do it or the optimism will also reduce stress. And at the same time, if you get the social support and it will also reduces the stress. The social support when we say, it depends on four things. How large is my social network? How many people I interact with and how many people are close to me? And depending upon the larger the social network, less susceptible you will be to stress. And also social support include the support in kind or support in cash. These are called the tangible support. In time of stress, if you can receive the tangible support from the community or you receive the informational support to deal with the difficulties or adverse situations or you receive the sympathy, empathy and care from the close relatives or the emotional support, then you can able to manage the stress. And there are very simple ideas to manage stress, such as like practice deep breathing, exercises, get adequate sleep, think positively, manage time wisely, simplify your life, get organized, take time out of you, out, out for you, examples take breaks, walks or listen to music, exercise eat healthy, ask for help or talk with parents, friends or counselors. These are the simple ways to manage the stress. If you look for the management of stress, there are two prominent themes that can able to handle stress. One is the western theme, which mentions about autogenic training, relaxation response, 
biofeedback, emotional freedom techniques. And in such type of situations, either you go for fight with the stressful events or you leave the stressful e event. That is called the fight or flight response. And in handling the problem, either you modulate your emotion to deal with the situation or you deal with the problem directly in order to reduce the stress. And one which is called the problem focused coping, where you take active steps to regulate the problem in such a way or to modulate the problem in such a way, so that it will reduce the stress. Or else, you change yourself in order to deal with the stress. In contrast, in and in in contrast to this, there are many popular techniques in eastern literature and these are evidence based techniques to reduce stress. Say for example, relaxation technique. From the lower part of the body, you move to the face muscles. For 10 seconds, you say that a particular body is part is relaxed. Likewise, you go from the lower part of the body, from the leg and foot to the face and the head. For every part you take 10 seconds. Again you return by saying and through auto suggestion that the part is relaxed. Close your eyes, sleep in a close your eyes, put a carpet, see, sleep in a sleep like posture you put yourself there and then relax every part of your body from the lower part to the face and the head. For every part you take 10 seconds. Again, in the reverse way, when you relax, go from the upper part to the lower part, take 15 seconds for every part to relax. And this relaxation technique is also associated with stress management. Similarly, Savasan in yogic practices or Jog Nidra, where active voice you will hear the active voice and accordingly you will also condition your mind to deal with the stress. Similarly, deep breathing you inhale deeply, keep it for some time, then leave. This is done for the oxygenation of the mind and different parts of the body. This will increase concentration. And similarly, listening to relaxing music, going for yoga and meditations, these are laughing, joining a laughing club or telling something to self condition your mind itself, just for today I will be honest, just for today I will be sincere in my duty, just for today I will tolerate others, just for today I will not be aggressive. This is a self conditioning type of things, which will write some statements and repeat the same statement for yourself every day before joining your duty. So, some of your odd behavior will go that is more likely to cause stress odd behavior will go out from your behavioral repertory. Similarly, exercises, standing for your own right, time management, improving relationship, managing the proper diet and yoga and social support will help you to manage stress. The western techniques like creative visualization, cognitive behavioral techniques, autogenic training, relaxation response, biofeedback, emotional freedom from techniques, these are least known in the eastern, eastern countries. So, where our social adaptation is there, social acceptance is there, such type of technique we can adapt and we can reduce the stress. And even in one of our study we have shown 
that practice of yoga and meditation reduces the burnout of the employees. And some of the organizations, they are also making it compulsory uh, that during the office hours, the employees can practice yoga and meditation so as to reduce their stress. And it is becoming more popular in western countries. Similarly, aerobic exercises like standing in a position jogging in that particular place or walking. So, these are some simple tips which will help you to manage your stress. Let us now know our level of stress. Here I have given a questionnaire, you can try it out and see how fearful, how, how stressful are you. And accordingly, you think of a technique which will be suitable for you and practice yourself. And if you do it for yourself, you can control your stress and you will take care of your own destiny and get rid of the stress and can be a prospective employee or a prospective person in the community. Because stress deters our performance in every sphere of life. Let us control it. And therefore, somewhere I have said and that uh, stress is a uh, stress is just like a ember or a fire. You can you can you can remove it or if you want to spread it, it can spread you and burn you also. So, the choice is yours and I think with your own evolving your own techniques, you can control your stress rather than going for medication and other techniques. There is a rich tradition and scientific evidences are available and evidence based management of stress will help you a lot. I will say, I will also attach some of the documents how you can manage stress in, in the prospective of a question as well as Eastern. Thank you.